Welcome to Good God, Conversations That Matter About Faith and Public Life. I'm George Mason, your host, and I'm thrilled to welcome back to the program Texas Radio Hall of Famer. Uh, this is Jody Dean, the great Jody Dean. Jody, thanks for joining us again on Good God. Thank you, George. Appreciate it. Good to be here. Well, in our first episode, we talked uh, about your faith journey, your spiritual journey, about uh, the uh, long and winding road uh, that is and that continues to be, uh, which is true for all of us, isn't it? Yeah, oh, goodness, yeah. I, I, some people have a shorter road, I'm sure. Um, but I'm not so sure that I, I, I'm very grateful for my road. I mean, there are a lot of things I would do differently, but just for me, I think that it was tailored for my own personality. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, we've, we call this program Good God, and so we, we talked a good bit about the relationship with God that you have in the first episode, but I want to move that a little bit toward how we integrate that in our public life and in doing good. And so just to begin with, there's, there's for someone like you, there's all sorts of opportunities to use your uh, position and your place in public uh, public life uh, to support good causes. And uh, I know that, uh, you know, probably over the course of the last 40 years or so, you, you've been uh, host for numerous fundraisers and banquets, and you put the spotlight on uh, an awful lot of good things going on in the community. Some of that's just uh, sort of the work that you do, but how much of that is also the a recognition of this is this is sort of part of your vocation as a Christian too? Well, I think it's what I'm here for, really. I, I, I've always felt like that my platform is rather useless if I'm the only one on it. Um, so, you know, whatever ability I have to give other people who are doing good things exposure mm -hmm. or attention uh, or praise where praise is due, mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like that's, an, that's a duty. You know, it's, mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. can't choose a strong enough word to describe that. Uh, and I, I've, that's the thing is, you know, over the, the best part of my career has always been and will always be the people I've been privileged to meet. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just it floors me. It absolutely floors me, the kindness and goodness of people out there on a day-to-day -day basis. Most of the time, we never hear their names. We don't know what they do. They just make the world go round. And so, you know, if I can do anything to shine a light on that and encourage other people to do the same thing, then that's a really, that's, that's much better than playing a hit song or, uh, you know, covering the latest car wreck. It's interesting to me, though, how important it is to people who is the one who is doing the shining the light? Uh, oh, that's, there's know? no doubt. You know, so, I mean, you, I, know, you do you do the news on the one hand, and you're 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 over here trying to shine the light on someone else, and but but, but people believe that and care about it because of you uh, being the trusted one that is doing the. Uh, the broadcast, so to speak. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I, I worked for a long time with uh, one of my many fathers, and I, I'm grateful for the, all the fathers that I have, but one of my primary dads in life has been Ron Chapman, mm -hmm. uh, who I worked with at KVIL and who I followed at, at K-Love, and he's kind of my Elijah in, mm -hmm. in many ways. In fact, I, I said when he left K-Love and I took over the morning show after he departed, you know, just give me a half of your spirit and I'll be good. Nice. And, uh, you know, he used to talk about the ability to hold the spotlight for others. And he said, you know, you can find 5,000 people who want to stand in the spotlight, but you can only find uh, five who are willing to hold it for others and do it well. And nice. I thought, man, that's the, and that was his secret is that people think about Ron Chapman as this ginormous ego and this creative genius and all of mm -hmm. this sort of thing. But the, his secret was that he was able to assemble a team and shine that spotlight on members of the team and let them shine. Uh -huh. And, you know, when you put together a great group of people and have the right chemistry, which is so important, mm -hmm. the, the ability to take a step back and let somebody else have the out cue or have the punchline or have the moment or whatever, that's a gift. And so I got to watch that on a regular basis. And uh, it's, it's hard to do. Um, we all want to run in and rescue the bit. And it, uh, he was it, willing to trust other people in their professionalism. And, and I tried to learn from that. You know, it, it really reminds me, the, the, the great theologian Karl Barth of the 20th century, his, his favorite painting was Matthew Grunewald's, Grunewald's uh, painting of uh, John the Baptist pointing a bony finger at the cross where Jesus is. And, and, and the reason it's so interesting, I think, is because 
obviously John the Baptist would not have been there pointing uh, at the cross. He was already dead, but it's like what Bart was saying and he believed the artist was saying is uh, we're always, we're never the, the Christ figure ourselves. We're always the John the Baptist figure that's pointing mm -hmm. to where do we see Christ in the world and, 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 and using our, 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 voice and our spotlight to to throw light to other people and say this this is what you should be looking at yeah i i i think that that's that painting is spot on and, and i think that way too many of us and this is this is something that is really nettlesome for me way too many of us claim the glory mm -hmm. uh rather than point to it um i think that's a failing of modern western Christianity in particular, mm -hmm. uh, that we want to think it's all about us. You know, I think it was Max Lucado who said it's not about us and it's not about now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that's very true. You know, it's about how well we follow the rules. It's how well mm -hmm. we follow the liturgy. It's about how well we stick to the script. And it's not about any of that. Mm -hmm. It's not about any of that. It's about the grace when you don't. It's about mm -hmm. the, the forgiveness when you don't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think Paul said, you know, my faith, it's just filthy rags, just mm -hmm. filthy rags. And mm -hmm. so um, I think that anytime we can point and, and say, there's the reason, right. whether it's, whether it's our, in our faith or whether it's a teacher or whether it's a doctor mm -hmm. or, or whether it's a coworker or whether it's a, a colleague, a neighbor, a friend, a minister, whoever it is to say, no, 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 I don't deserve the credit for that. That person does. Mm -hmm. That's the one who made this work. I think that that, you know, uh, Fiona, my, my beloved is, uh, you know, for years she was an actress and, and she taught me something that I really had never thought about before. And I'm embarrassed to say that was that the best actors are generous actors. Nice. They're generous actors. Mm -hmm. They don't hog the scene. They don't mm -hmm. hog the limelight. They're, they're very mm -hmm. giving and in their performances and they allow their, the people sh sharing the scene with them to shine. And boy, you know, that generosity of spirit doesn't just apply to our spiritual walk or to our faith or to our church or anything. It, 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 it should, it, we're seeing it right now. You know, when people go to the grocery store and take more time to thank that checkout clerk or that, that delivery mm -hmm. driver and those people mm -hmm. that's sharing that credit. And, you know, that's just a, that's one of the beautiful things that's coming out of this whole mess. Of course, on the other hand, there are those who are going in there and hoarding as well. And so, <laughs> you know, they're, they're coming out with, you know, with more than they need. And I'm, yeah. I'm looking at the sign behind your head there. It says jodydean.com, less stuff, more what? Yeah. More life. More, more life. life. And yeah. more life is the title of your uh, new program. Oh, well. well, yeah. And that's where it came from. Actually, you know, Fiona suggested that and we didn't know what we were going to call it. In fact, when we first put it on the boards to produce, we, we didn't have a title. We did right. not have a title. And finally, Gary Schneider, who's the president and general manager at CBS 11 said, well, let's just call it more life. And I thought, well, isn't that something we need? Yeah. And I'll tell you where that came from is because, you know, like most of us, we go through that period of our life where we chase stuff. You just yeah. stuff, you know, like yeah. George Carlin used to go get more stuff. You got to put one of the greatest, greatest, yeah. Uh, yeah comedy it's scriptural. Sketches ever. Yeah, it's scriptural, right. you know, yeah. even for George. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I, I was in that same mode too. You know, we all want the big house and the car and blah, 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 right. blah. Well, you know, I got a paid off 12 year old truck and it's the most beautiful thing in the world right now. Right. Um, we've got a 800 square foot home. Right. You know, I mean, we live, we have one bathroom in our uh -huh. house. Let me tell you something. If you want to strengthen your relationship, buy a house <laughs> with one bathroom because you will learn to communicate. I guarantee you. Uh, and we built this little tiny studio in the back, which was actually going to be a place for the family to come stay when they were in town or for uh -huh. my daughter to have sleepovers with her, yeah. her buddies. And, you know, now it's a, a TV studio that we're producing this show from. And, uh, right. you know, the, the whole thing about stuff, where's it? You can't take it with you. I mean, we all know that. Right. So what, what can we take with us? More life, more life. So that's where the title came from. So, all right, let's, let's say uh, more life is uh, 11 a.m. on Saturdays on yeah. 11, uh, yep. CBS 11. And uh, so what kind of stories are you doing? What, what are you shining the light on? 
Well, it, good things that great people are doing in the community. Uh, and it's just all over the map. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that we've learned during this pandemic is just how original and creative and thoughtful people can be. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be anything big. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I get emails and messages I mean, constantly now from people who are saying, well, you know, my, my group is making masks or PPE or right. my business has converted its uh, production line or it, it's endless, endless. Uh, you know, people are sending me videos and photos and here's what we're doing. And we had a drive by parade for my 89 year old grandmother and just little things, you know, the little things that make the world go round. And, you know, I, I always look, I always try to look for, you know, what's the point of all this? What, what is, why are we going through this? Right. What what is the meaning to all this? What are we meant to appreciate? And uh, you know that this has given us a, an opportunity, I think, to to really dwell on a lot of the good. And frankly, George, I got to be honest with you. This show was born of rage. Uh -huh. You know, I, I, when I, when I started looking around at what was going on and how mm -hmm. people are treating this and how some members of the mm -hmm. you know the community view this and the, you know, the minimization and the dismissal and that sort of thing just mm -hmm. filled me with so much rage. You know, I've, this is, again, this is, I mentioned in a previous podcast that somebody once called me Peter. Well, I was reaching for the sword. Right. I just wanted right. to whack somebody's head off. I mean, I have, I have, I have a temper. Yeah. And so it's funny that this show that is spotlighting the great good that people are doing was born of anger. And yeah, I know, just, I thought there's got to be some way to focus mm -hmm. on what people, the actions people are taking to help others. Right. So it, uh, it, it's interesting that um, the, uh, the great mystery writer P.D. James said that uh, evil is really easy to write about uh, because it's big and flashy and quick. Good is more difficult because you can only, it, it takes time. You have, to, you have to be able to see how it comes to fruition from small acts that are often uh, not glamorous. And really having a format like yours is different from doing the evening news, so to speak, because you, the evening news, you got, you, you, people say, well, why don't we have more good stories? Well, there's, you know, the goodness is going on all the time, but these breaks in it with these, uh, uh, you know, evil acts uh, are, are newsworthy. Yeah. But now you're able to show us in a format that, uh, that, that is a, a kind of antidote to that, what goodness really is, is going on all the time. Well, you know, by definition, I wrote a book years ago, and it's not the book I would write now. And it was called Finding God in the Evening News. Yes. And it didn't sell. I think my mom bought 10 <laughs> copies, and that was it. And it didn't sell because if I'd have titled it Finding Evil in the Evening News, it would have been a bestseller. Because people, people want their biases confirmed. Mm -hmm. And finding good in the evening news, finding God in the evening news, people know, mm -hmm. but nobody wanted to hear that. And the whole premise of the book was that 30 minutes of news is a 30 minute call to prayer. You look at, if you're looking for something to pray for, watch the news. There's something, there's something, there's something, there's something. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, part of the, one of the things I wrote in the book was something I heard somewhere, you know, no one slows down to watch a good driver. News by yes. definition is the exception to the rule. That's right. It's oddity, it's impact, it's familiarity, all of those mm -hmm. things. Well, mm -hmm. this show more life is about the rule. Mm -hmm. It's not about the exceptions. It's nice. not about the bad things or the disasters right. or the train derailments and, you know, nice. car wrecks and things like that. This is about things that work right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, news organizations have tried the good newscast before. Nobody watched. Yes. Nobody watched. There was a station in Chicago years ago that tried to do 30 minutes of good news. Nobody watched. <laughs> Nobody wanted to it, right. because we don't watch the news for good stuff. We say right. we do, but we really don't. Well, this show is out of that mold. It, it, it's not at six o'clock or six 30 or whenever it's on Saturday mornings at 11 o'clock. And yeah, it, it, yeah, I guess there's kind of a faith bent to it. That doesn't have to be, you know, I, I think a lot of us get caught up in the idea that it has to be churchy church and right. no, it doesn't, you know, God can use anybody and exactly. and however you define him or her you know i mean uh there's a there's a goodness in in us in mm -hmm. human beings it, it's the better angels of our nature i think that's what lincoln called it and i really believe that and i think that you know shining a light on that that's not the news's job I, it, we shouldn't even ask them to do that i've been in the news you know, and by the way, let me tell you something. I've heard people say recently, you know, oh, we just these people on the news. They seem to, be, they seem to be pulling for the river rather than the box of puppies. Uh, 
Yeah. And I've, had, I've been in the news media for 45 plus years now and never have I met anyone in that business who's pulling for the river. Yes. What I have seen are people, once the camera goes off, who sob <sighs> as they walk out of the studio. Hmm. And there are no grief counselors for them. There's no one there to console them or say, it's okay, you'll be okay. I vividly remember after 9-11, it was the day that they had the ceremony at the National Cathedral, and they sang, It Is Well With My Soul. And if you know the right. story of that Horatio Pat Spafford song, oh. it's gripping. Powerful. I was bawling. Renee Seiler, who went on to host the CBS uh, early show for years, was sitting next to me. She's crying. Everybody in the studio is crying. That happens more than people realize. And after 30 minutes, that's one reason I stopped doing it. I got tired of walking out mm. of there every day feeling mm. beaten down. Mm. So this show is about trying to focus on those things that go on every day. They don't make the headlines. Thank God, because if they did, they'd be the exception to the rule. The idea that neighbors mowing the little strip in the you know easement between their house and the person next door, the person who's collecting mail, the person who's going, yeah, a great example of this, Hawkeye Lewis, who's the morning guy on one of the local radio stations here in Dallas, Fort Worth. I run into him one day at the grocery store. Hey, man, I saw you here. We live in the same area. I said, I saw you here the other day. Why are you back so soon? He goes, I'm shopping for a shut-in neighbor of mine. Nice. There it is, right there. Neighborliness. You know, what does I mean, the Lord require of you? That's not going to make right. the 6 o'clock news at the front page of the paper, but it's going to yep. make the world go round, and people are doing that, and that's all. You know, I wish we had more time than this little 30 minutes to do it, mm -hmm. but right now, mm -hmm. while we're all looking for that beam of hope, yes. that ray of light, that feels like it serves a purpose. We're talking with Jody Dean, and Jody, I want to take you now to uh, this uh, coronavirus period, and it, it has in some ways, when, it, when I follow you on social media, I see that it has gotten your cackles up. A lot, oh, of, yeah, uh, yeah. A lot, a lot of people of faith, especially, who are uh, denying science and who are, uh, you know, misrepresenting the best of our faith tradition. And I suppose, as a public figure, uh, people who uh, love and trust you and know that you're a Christian, uh, you, you might uh, be putting yourself out there uh, sometimes on social media and, uh, and not, uh, not just uh, fluffing the pillows of the faithful. <laughs> well, it's something I've never done before. Uh, you know, even, even, my, even in my sin and error, I've always had a big mouth. Um, and I've, you know, I haven't always been honest about myself, but I've always tried to shoot straight with people about what I feel. Yes. And, you know, gradually the two have come into alignment, I hope, more than they used to be. But, you know, when I see something that I just feel is wrong or wrongheaded, mm -hmm. I am not the kind of person who's going to stand there with my hands in my pocket and say or do nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I'm not just going to say something and leave it at that. I'm going to try to go do something, too, which is kind of the genesis of this program. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I, I really I said for a long time. And this is going to, I'm sure you know Ole Anthony. Oh, sure. Ole Anthony is, is yeah. a kind of a spiritual mentor, and I think okay. he has a ministry of accountability, and he, he ain't does. for everybody. <laughs> he ain't for everybody. Let me tell you something. And, and I had him so, on So TV. Just, for, just for the listeners, Ole Anthony is, uh, is a guy who shines a spotlight on people <laughs> of faith, faith leaders who are uh, dubious in character. Why and, do you need that yes. Gulfstream jet there, yes, preacher? Exactly. Yeah, that there sort of go. thing. Okay. Yeah. So I had him on my TV show years ago. We had we did a TV show at CBS 11 called Positively Texas, and it was right before Y2K. And of course, everybody's buzzing about the millennium, and you know, is this the end of the era, and all of that sort of the end of the age. And I asked him on camera. I said, a lot of people are worried about the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Who is the Antichrist? And Oli looked dead at me live on the air and said, Look in the mirror. Ooh. <laughs> and he's right and he's right wow this flesh yeah. Yeah. is antichrist right. and you know i find it fascinating that john who gave us that mystical 666 number in john 666 mm -hmm. uh, 666 yes says and at that they turned and no longer followed him now i don't believe in coincidence right you know, right. Jesus is talking about eating the blood and, you know, drinking the blood and eating the flesh and that sort of thing. And when they heard this, who can follow it? It's too hard. And they right. turned to no longer follow it. That's mm -hmm. John 6, 66. So turning and following is antichrist right. or turning away mm -hmm. and, and right. not following. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that's me on a daily basis. That's right. not some, you know, that's not Sam Neill. You know, that's not some little kid named Damien. That's me right. on right. a daily right. basis. And so 
what's, you know, I think that we, in, in this culture, which is very tempting, it's an easy thing to do, have chosen idols. And that's one of Oli's big things. And, mm -hmm. and we followed those idols. We followed our own righteousness. We followed our own legality. We followed our own rule keeping. We followed our own, you know, aren't we great? You know, and mm -hmm. I think that arrogance and that pride, what does the Bible say about pride? I, we can all quote that scripture, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I have said for a while that we have chosen a golden calf. Right. And I pray that 40 years in the wilderness is all we get. Right. I really do pray that because I have grandchildren now. My, my oldest son mm -hmm. and his wife have two little kids and I worry about their future and I worry about what they're going to face. And I, I know that, you know, the, the quickest way to disaster from personal experience is to think we're all that. Sure. And, you know, I, I think that the only way through that, the only way to stop that is to try to focus on what people are doing for each other humbly. I mean, mm -hmm. these people don't want recognition or right. acknowledgement, but they're out there feeding their neighbors and they're, they're comforting their friends. And they're, I mean, those first responders and frontline healthcare workers out there that are doing miracles on a daily mm -hmm. basis, they, you know, C.S. Lewis said, you know, what we call miracles are just the everyday occurrences writ large. And that's sped what up. That's yeah, right. Sped yeah. up. Yeah. That's, that's right. what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. And so, right. you know, to celebrate that brings us back into that moment where we can say, humbly this is what it's about it's not about us and it's not right. about now it's about them it's shining that light so on so this is what this is actually what politics is I, I i'm not really changing the subject here because politics is the way we organize our lives together in the world you know the the the, the way we treat one another and we i think we confuse government and politics sometimes and and you know government has a way of uh, undoing the kind of political life that we should really be sharing and you're you're not uh, shy about about poking uh, at government and about government officials when they're disturbing the way we order our body, body politic instead of nurturing it. Listen, I, I have no patience for mendacity because I have practiced it. I know it when I see it. <laughs> yeah. I know con artists when I see them because I have been one. <laughs> I know I know how this works. I know how messaging works. I know mm -hmm. how re repetition works. I know how branding works. Mm -hmm. I know how applause works. Mm -hmm. And all of those things can be very, very toxic. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, we, we have gotten to a point now where we are very easily led. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, it, it, I, I don't mean to be a scourge. Although I do love that moment in the New Testament where Jesus is so angry at what's going on in the temple that he sits down to braid a whip of knotted cords. Yes. And that takes time. Now, he had time to cool off and didn't. Mm. And, mm. He's, and he goes, now, I don't know that I would have stopped at the temple door. I might have gone out mm -hmm. in the street and kept going, but mm -hmm. that's the difference between him and me. Mm -hmm. um, there is a verse in Proverbs about six things God hates and seven he despises. Mm -hmm. And if you read through that, I mean, it's not a long, I think, it, you know, if you include divorce, which he mentions in Malachi, uh, you know, that yeah. makes what, eight, something like yeah. that. But, you know, lips that sow discord, yes. feet that run to do evil, mm -hmm. uh, haughty eyes, mm -hmm. haughty right. eyes. God hates that. God hates my prideful eyes. Mm -hmm. Um you know, hands that sh shed innocent blood. Um, those things are, there, there's no equivocation about that. There's no fudging on that sort of thing. And I, I think that what we really need to do is examine everything we do and ask ourselves, okay, is this something, does that fall into that category or one of those six or seven categories? Mm -hmm. And if it does, why are we doing it? Right. Why are we doing it? And, and I think that you only have to look as far as Twitter or social media or Facebook and see lips that sow discord, haughty eyes. You know, it's like, oh, my mm -hmm. God, what are we doing? And that's why I really wonder, okay, wilderness is right over there. If you want to spend 40 years over there until right. this generation is wiped from the mm -hmm. face of the earth, is dust, mm -hmm. we can go there or you can rig figure this stuff out now and save yourself a lot of trouble because uh, – Believe me, I, we've all learned our dad in the car, don't make me come back there. Don't make me come find you. Yes. Because if that happens, <laughs> all bets are off at that point.
Well, faith is, uh, when, when you talk about these things, six things and seven that God uh, despises, uh, you, you know, there's, there's a tendency among religious people, especially evangelical Christians, to internalize faith and personalize it to such a, a, an extent that there's a disconnect from the way uh, they, they treat their relationship vertically with God and horizontally with other people. You know, one and, of my favorite stories comes, and I don't know how, George, you probably know this story better than I do, but I, I heard this mm-hmm. years ago that when the Apostle John was a little old man, you know, he's seen mm-hmm. all, and by the way, for all those who believe the prosperity go- gospel, have you noticed that 11 of the original 12 died violent, horrible yes. deaths? Mm-hmm. So there's John, and he's the last surviving member of the bunch, and he's an old man, and all of his friends, including his brother, have all gone before him. He's pretty much alone in the world now. Mm-hmm. And he's there in Ephesus, and he's so old that they carry him into the worship service. And every time he comes in, he always has only one thing to say. Now, this is the story, but it fits, because this is a man who laid his head on Jesus's chest and actually heard the heartbeat of Christ. He says to the people, little children, if you but love one another, it is enough. He doesn't mention going twice on Sundays, once on Wednesdays. He doesn't mention whether you've got a piano in the sanctuary or not. He doesn't mention whether you wear robes or not. He doesn't mention whether you, you know, you, you respect the Pope or not. He doesn't, he says, if you just love each other, Mm -hmm. it's enough. And isn't that what Jesus kind of said? Here are the two greatest commandments, love the Lord, your God as thyself and your neighbor. And that's it. There it is. And every of it all, the t-shirt that I love is, you know, baseball is life. The rest is just details. Well, that's, life yeah. love one another right that's enough right. and we get caught up in you know what's on the building with the sign on the building who's on the sign instead of who's inside the building beautiful and and that's just to me you know that's that's uh, that i go back to our previous podcast when i talked about my mom and pop encouraging me to think outside of mm-hmm. myself and outside the box i think that's the biggest thing that we fall afoul of is that we get caught up in where we worship and, you know, what, we're at six flags over Jesus. Well, we must be in his favor. And uh, No, I, I got to tell you a quick story. I visited this very poor church once in South Dallas. I was doing a story on people who were giving during the holidays. And I walked, it's in that book. And again, I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't write that book again. <laughs> I, I, really, I wouldn't. Um, and this woman was in the kitchen and by herself before anybody else got there that day. And I, I showed up and it's a bad part of town and a guy like me and a truck like that and a, you know, could have been there to rob her. And I walk into the kitchen. She never looked up. She's making breakfast for the volunteers who were still on their way. And she said, are you hungry? And I thought to myself then, and I still think that to this day, when you walk into any place, a church in particular, and those are the first words you hear, are you hungry? Then you have found a church. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, well, you know, this is, it reminds me that your Church of Christ background is, uh, is making a contribution here because one of the gifts the Church of Christ gave to uh, the more traditional uh, historic church is a reminder that the church is not the denomination and it's not the building, uh, it's the people gathered who are living their faith. Oh, dude. Uh, oh, oh listen, it, this past year, the last two years, I've been privileged to be part of a, uh, a Lessons and Carol service at yes. the uh, church. Uh, of, uh, I'm, I'm going to get this wrong. The Church of the Incarnate Word or Church of the Incarnation. It's right there off Central Expressway. Church of North- the Incarnation. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's... Yeah. It, it, Believe me, Church of Christ yeah. kids have anything have trouble with anything longer than Trail Lake Church of Christ. If you start <laughs> throwing those liturgical words in there, we get lost. So it's the Church of the Incarnation, and they do this yeah. beautiful service where they have this magnificent choir, and they're doing these canticles yeah. and songs from you know seven eight hundred years ago. And we get up and we read a scripture, and they sing, and we read a script, lessons and carols, and it is high church. Right. And I may start crying just thinking about it because there's something for everyone you know yes, whether yes. it's the whether it's the methodist youth minister and the guitar you know or, you know right. whether it's young life or whether it's that or I, acapella I was, singing in, uh, in four-part or harmony acapella, in the, you know it's funny when i was at abilene christian university and after you know i left after two years because i wanted to go to work in the radio and television business but i you didn't think about it i didn't at the time how much i loved chapel every day and yes. we would sing you know Soldiers of Christ arise and, you know, 
the Lord bless you and keep you. And, and my granddad directing song songs at the Wallace street church of Christ, you're, you're chopping cotton, right? You know, this whole right. thing. And, um, <laughs> and how much I loved that and how much I look back and still love that. And that's why whenever I get to go worship with, uh, you know, my, my friends in the Jewish faith or my friends in the Muslim faith, I, I drink it in. Yeah. I got to speak at Notre Dame one time and I'm walking the campus and it was a mo- foggy oh, a Monday. Yeah. Uh-huh. It, it was beautiful. And it was a foggy Monday night. And, uh, you know, they have the replica of the church of uh, the grotto of Lords mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the candles are all over the place. If you've seen Rudy, you know, the scene and I, you know, I'm standing there and there's touchdown Jesus up on the hill. Uh, and I, I got walk- to play football there and see that. Yeah, was- see, awesome. and I walked yeah, into yeah. the church. They have the, the, the chapel of the incarnate word there. Yes. And, it's a Monday night and the, there's probably seven, 800 students in there for Vespers. And I'm like, who wouldn't love this? You know, church of Christ or otherwise. I mean, right. I, you know, you know, if my grandparents saw me dancing, they'd probably have a heart attack, but uh, you know, that makes me want to dance. I'm sorry. It just does. It made David want to dance, you know? So that's just, I think that's the beauty of it is that there is something at that table for everyone. Well, Jody Dean, you're sure, certainly uh, inviting us to that table in the various ways you serve our community and serve the Lord in doing it. And thank you for sharing your life and your thoughts on good God with us. Uh, we're grateful to be in the journey with you. Well, thank you, George. Thank you for all that you and Wilshire Baptist have done and are doing. And I tell you, you are a, you are a encouragement to me and you strengthen me and uh you know i'm kind of an itinerant believer i'll worship wherever they'll let me and i've I'm surprised that more churches don't see me coming and lock the door frankly <laughs> i had one woman when i was baptized as an adult said you're lucky they didn't hold you under you know <laughs> so uh, and uh but what you guys are doing is, is just fantastic and i'm privileged to be a part of this well we have a we have a t-shirt that says everybody and that means you and uh, anybody else so uh, we think that's what the good news is all about uh thanks for being with us jody dean god bless you thank you thanks so much for continuing to tune into good god We've enjoyed uh, having these episodes produced, over a hundred of them now, uh, usually in a studio, but now we're doing so through computer technology in this time of social isolation. We're all trying to be careful with one another, but we also want to be careful to cultivate our spirit during this time, not to be discouraged, not to be despairing, but to be encouraged and to uh, encourage one another. So thank you for tuning in. We hope you appreciate these as much as we enjoy being able to offer them to you as a gift.